In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we have two feasts converging uh, on this third Sunday of Lent. We have the veneration of the precious and life-giving cross. And in our old calendar, uh, the Julian calendar, we celebrate the great feast of the Annunciation. And so we have these two very important feasts coming together, and we're offered a couple different passages uh, from Scripture that I would like to take up a challenge to kind of weave together for you a little bit. Christ says in the Gospel of Matthew that <clears throat> those who would love to, like to follow after him, that they would have to take up their cross and follow him daily. That they would have to give up their life in order to gain their life. This is a very hard saying. We are given the cross as a, an example of something that is sometimes difficult to uh, endure in our lives. It's, uh, we look upon it in our churches, and we see the suffering of our Lord. But there's an essence in our hymnography for this feast day today that is in the center of Lent, or right in the middle of Lent, that the cross is not such a, a uh, it's supposed to be looked upon as something that is gruesome and difficult and hard. It's actually uh, put out here for joy for us. So when we look upon the cross, we look upon it, and we see in our Orthodox Church that on top of Usually the placard, it says the King of glory, Christ our King of glory, is the cross that brings glory to God, to Christ, to the Son of God. And so we look upon the cross today as inspiration, as motivation, as a, a way of in getting uh, some grace from God in order to endure the endeavors of the rest of the Lent. It's not supposed to be a weapon of, of death, as we know it to be, but a weapon of peace and of victory. And so we look upon the cross today and we bow down before it, we venerate it, and we take the challenge that if we can accept the cross in our life, that with it come blessing and joy and peace. I know that there's a quite contradictory in our day and age where we look for things to be easy. We look for comfort. We look for things to make sense in our minds. Our faith doesn't do that oftentimes. And so the cross is this mystery the mystery is that the blessings of the cross is concealed with the sufferings of the cross. But yet we are commanded that we must pick it up and follow him if we would like to be a disciple of Christ. We cannot be a disciple of Christ without enduring the cross, our cross, the cross that God has given us. And that's a myriad of things. But the first and foremost, the most biggest cross that each and every one of us is given by God is what the Theotokos was asked and given to today. We hear about it in the feast. This young woman of 15 years old is visited by the archangel Gabriel and announced that, a, that the Son of God will come down and overshadow her by the Holy Spirit and be conceived in her womb. A mystery that cannot be explained, cannot be understood by human minds. It's never happened before in the history of time. Our hymnography tells us that God can do anything. He can overcome nature. And in fact, the scripture says that all things are possible with God. And what was her cross here? Is her obedience. Is her willingness to say, okay, I will follow you, Lord. I will do this. I don't understand it, but I will do it. That's the cross of each and every one of us. It's to sacrifice our own will on the cross. It's not us that go on the cross, but our will. Our willingness to follow our Lord in any direction that he asks us. Do we say, yes, I will follow you? This is the example of the mother of God. Who, by the way, if Christ is the king of glory, if Christ is king, which I hear is uh, not supposed to be said right now. It's a very controversial thing to say. But who is our queen if he's king? The mother of God. His mother. She is the queen of heaven. And she gives us an example of humility and obedience. This is the biggest cross that any of us will carry. And I know that many of you carry big crosses outside of that. But humility and obedience to God is by far the heaviest cross that any one of us will have to do, endure. That because it means that we have to do things not as we want them, but as God wants them. We often have to discern in our life the things that are pleasing to God and those that are not. And those things that are often not pleasing to God are pleasing to us, to our bodies, to our financial pocketbooks, 
And so we often have to make difficult decisions. It says that in the gospel today, I repeat again, that all things are possible with God. He can overcome nature. Demography today for the Feast of Annunciation said he borrowed human flesh from his mother. How can we comprehend such things? With that said, there's one thing contradictory about this scripture verse. There is really one thing that God cannot do, despite it saying it. He cannot make you be obedient. He cannot make you submit your will to him. He cannot make you love him. He has given us the free will, free agency, to act in our lives as we wish. He cannot change that. He might prod us every now and then. He may knock on our door. He may send people to us in order to open our eyes. But he will not force us to go against our own self-will. And so we have a decision to make. Do we pick up our cross of obedience and humility and follow him? Because he cannot force us to do it. All things may be possible, but this, this is impossible for him. Because he loves you. He created you in his image to have that ability, to have this power, this strength, to run your life as according as you wish. And many of us do, according as we wish. And we often fall in destruction and despair and despondency and unhappiness. And so we look at the cross and say, well, I don't want to give up my will. I do I have to be obedient to the church? Why do I have to be humble in a world of, of pride and strong people? Why? Because you love God. Because you want to inherit the kingdom. Hell only exists because of self-will. You know this, brothers and sisters. Hell would never exist if God can force all of us to love him. Hell is a choice for each one of us who to turn our back on God turn away from his love that he has offered us. That is hell. It is eternity. Once we die and pass from this life, we cannot change that. We chose. We have the self-will. God will not force us to love him. So today as we look up upon the cross and we know the great mystery he accomplished on the cross and we will celebrate this come Holy Week in, in less than four weeks from now, that he defeats death, he resurrects us to a new life. That he is proclaimed king, the son of God. He sends the Holy Spirit to guide us into all eternity. He does everything. But he's not going to force us to love him. So let us look at an example of the humility of the mother of God today as a virgin young woman accepting such a huge cross how many horrible things that were said about her? How many horrible things are still today said about her? For bearing our Savior, as was foretold by the prophets. Let's look to her for help and strength to fulfill our duty to pick up our cross, because she has done it. Christ has done it. And shall we follow them into the kingdom of heaven? We too must do it. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.